Generosity. It's the crown jewel of relationships, right? Give and you shall receive. But what if I told you that your generous heart, that habit of always giving, could be the very thing tearing your relationship apart? Yes, you heard that right. Sometimes your willingness to give is like tossing gasoline on a fire, unknowingly fueling disaster. Wait, what? Generosity, a bad thing, in relationships. Yep, we're going there, and trust me, by the end of this, you'll be rethinking every selfless gesture you've ever made. Buckle up, because it's about to get real. So, why is generosity something we've been taught to cherish actually one of the most misunderstood traps in relationships. It's the paradox nobody wants to talk about. We glorify giving so much that we ignore its dark side, the emotional undercurrent that shifts the balance of power. And if you're not paying attention, that imbalance can drown your relationship in resentment, dependency, and worst of all, manipulation. It starts with one simple act, Generosity in relationships often begins with small, seemingly innocent gestures. You offer to help your partner with something, a chore, a task, or a favor. Maybe it's something as simple as paying for dinner, running an errand, or planning a weekend trip. In the beginning, these acts of kindness feel good. You're happy to help, and your partner is grateful. But the danger lies in how these small gestures can snowball into an unbalanced dynamic. Over time, without even realizing it, you might find yourself in a routine where you're the one constantly giving. Maybe you're always the one initiating dates, buying thoughtful gifts, or making sacrifices. Suddenly, generosity isn't just a kind thing you do occasionally, it's an expectation. Your partner might not even notice that they're no longer contributing at the same level because you've set the tone for the relationship. The problem is that these unspoken expectations can become the foundation for future resentment. You might start thinking, why am I always the one giving? Or worse, your partner could start taking your generosity for granted, expecting that you'll always be there to pick up the slack. It's a slippery slope. What starts as a simple act of kindness can lead to a routine where you feel unappreciated and drained, all because the balance of giving and receiving has been disrupted. And that's when the cracks in the relationship begin to show. Generosity as a control mechanism. This may sound harsh, but generosity can sometimes be a subtle form of control. When you're always giving, whether it's your time, money, emotional support, or energy, you become the person in charge of maintaining the relationship. It feels empowering to be the one holding everything together, doesn't it? You feel indispensable, like the relationship wouldn't survive without your contributions. But here's the hard truth. That feeling of indispensability can create a toxic dynamic. This kind of control isn't malicious, but it is dangerous. You may think that by always giving, you're keeping the relationship healthy, but what you're really doing is making your partner dependent on you. They might start to rely on your generosity to solve their problems, to keep the emotional peace, or to make up for their own lack of effort. Eventually, this dynamic breeds resentment on both sides. You'll resent your partner for not contributing as much as you are, and they might resent you for holding so much control in the relationship. By always being the giver, you're not just controlling the dynamic. You're preventing your partner from stepping up and being an equal participant. The relationship becomes less of a partnership and more of a one-sided exchange where one person gives and the other simply takes. When generosity becomes a transaction, here's where things get even trickier. When you're always giving in a relationship, it can start to feel transactional. No one likes to think of their relationship as a series of trades, but let's be honest, sometimes it feels that way, doesn't it? You might not say it out loud, but deep down, you start expecting something in return for all your generosity. 
Whether it's more attention, affection, or even a simple thank you, you're no longer giving freely, you're keeping score. And when your partner doesn't reciprocate, that's when the bitterness sets in. You begin to feel undervalued and unappreciated. Thoughts like, why don't they ever do this for me? Start creeping in. Suddenly, every act of kindness becomes an emotional deposit and you're waiting for your partner to pay it back. But what if they don't? This transactional mentality is toxic because it turns love into a commodity, something to be traded and bartered for rather than freely given. Love, by nature, should be something you give without strings attached. But when you feel like you're the only one contributing, it's nearly impossible not to start expecting something in return. This is where relationships falter, as they become less about mutual care and more about an unspoken contract of you owe me. How it warps the power dynamic. In any healthy relationship, there's a natural ebb and flow of power. One day you're the one giving more and the next day it's your partner's turn to pick up the slack. This balance is essential for a thriving relationship. But when generosity becomes one-sided, the power dynamic shifts, and not in a good way. When you're the one constantly giving, you might start feeling like you're not just a partner, but a caretaker. You might even take pride in this role at first, feeling like you're the one keeping everything together. But over time, this leads to a sense of imbalance. The relationship becomes less of a partnership and more of a hierarchy, with you at the top, always giving, and your partner at the bottom, always receiving. This shift isn't just bad for you, it's bad for your partner too. They might start to feel infantilized or incapable of contributing in a meaningful way, and that sense of helplessness can erode their self-worth. On the flip side, you might start feeling superior, as if you're the better partner because you're doing more. But this mindset only deepens the divide between you and your partner, leading to emotional distance and a breakdown in communication. A relationship can't survive on an uneven power dynamic for long. Eventually, one person, whether it's you or your partner, will feel smothered, trapped, or emotionally neglected. And once that happens, it's only a matter of time before things start to fall apart. When generosity enables bad behavior, this is one of the toughest pills to swallow. Sometimes your generosity enables your partner's bad behavior. It's hard to admit because you don't want to believe that your kindness is contributing to the problem, but it can and often does. When you're always giving, always picking up the slack, and always being the bigger person. You're unintentionally teaching your partner that they don't have to contribute as much. Think about it. If you're always the one planning the dates, paying the bills or solving problems, your partner has no reason to step up. They get comfortable in the role of the receiver, and why wouldn't they? You're doing all the work. Over time, this creates a cycle of complacency your partner might not even realize they're slacking because you've made it so easy for them to coast. This dynamic breeds deeper issues like disrespect or emotional neglect. When one person is always doing the heavy lifting, the other might stop appreciating those efforts. They might start to feel entitled to your generosity, expecting you to always take care of things without putting in any effort themselves. And when respect is lost, the relationship's foundation starts to crumble. Generosity as a mask for insecurity. Here's a truth bomb. Sometimes we use generosity to mask our own insecurities. We give and give because we're afraid that if we don't, our partner won't love us as much. Maybe we've been hurt before, and now we overcompensate by being overly generous in hopes that it will secure our partner's affection. It's a way of protecting ourselves from the fear of rejection or abandonment. But this kind of giving isn't healthy. It's not coming from a place of genuine love. It's coming from a place of fear. 
You might think that by being overly generous, you're strengthening the relationship, but in reality, you're only weakening it. The more you give out of insecurity, the less authentic your relationship becomes. It's like building a house on quicksand. It might stand for a while, but eventually it's going to collapse. Generosity should never be a way to buy love or affection. True love is unconditional. It doesn't require constant acts of service to prove its worth. If you're giving because you're afraid of losing your partner, it's time to take a step back and reevaluate the relationship. Are you giving because you genuinely want to, or because you're afraid that if you don't, your partner will leave? How to reclaim balance in your relationship? So how do you fix this? How do you stop generosity from destroying your relationship? The first step is setting boundaries, not just with your partner, but with yourself. It's crucial to recognize when you're giving out of love versus when you're giving out of obligation, fear, or insecurity. Start by asking yourself some hard questions. Am I giving because I want to or because I feel like I have to? Am I afraid that if I stop giving, the relationship will fall apart? These are tough truths to face, but they're necessary if you want to reclaim balance in your relationship. Next, allow your partner to give too. Relationships are a two-way street, and both people need to contribute emotionally, mentally, and physically. Stop being the one who always takes the lead. Let your partner plan the date or solve their own problem. Give them the space to step up and be an equal partner. And most importantly, don't be afraid to say no. Sometimes the most generous thing you can do for yourself and your relationship is to stop overgiving. Saying no doesn't make you selfish, it makes you balanced. It's a reminder that you deserve to receive as much as you give. Generosity should be mutual, not sacrificial. At the end of the day, generosity should be a mutual exchange, not a one-sided sacrifice. If you're constantly feeling drained, underappreciated, or like your generosity is being taken advantage of, it's time to reassess. Relationships thrive when both people give and receive equally. Anything less is a recipe for disaster. And here's the key takeaway. Generosity should never come at the expense of your own emotional health. If you're always sacrificing your needs, desires or well-being for the sake of the relationship, you're not being generous, you're being self-destructive. True generosity enriches both people in the relationship. It's about creating a dynamic where both partners feel valued, appreciated and loved.